What's going on guys? It's Danny from Slow Restoration. We're back to work here on the Yukon Denali XL and uh, we're going to get a couple more things finished up here in the front end. We're going to do upper ball joints. We're actually going to do the whole upper A-arm. Um, it's easier to buy it like that. It comes with the ball joint, the arm itself, and these bushings out here. So we'll get that put on. That's actually a very easy job. Um, we're also going to do lower ball joints which is a little bit more involved. Uh, you, you end up having to break the axle loose. Um, since we're doing the A-arm, we'll break that loose, the upper one, and then we'll loosen this bottom nut up and uh, be able to slip that all out through there with that axle being out of the way. Once we get this upper A-arm broke loose, we can lay this down, get that axle to slide through, get that out of the way, and then it gives us enough room to get that bottom uh, spindle off that ball joint without that axle actually being in the way. So let's get started here. So we're going to get started here by actually loosening, loosening this ball joint nut up. We'll get it loosened up and dropped down. And then we'll just take a hammer and smack the knuckle right here. That should make that uh, pop right loose. If not, you can use a splitting fork. Um, I have it around here somewhere right here you can use that to pop it to however way you want <clears throat> usually pops right loose by hitting it um, we'll, all of this contraption here your abs sensor your ride height and the bracket for your brake line itself is held on to your a-arm with one 10, 10 millimeter bolt right there so we'll get that taken out we're also going to replace this sway bar end link that's broken and missing. Um, so let me get there. Uh, when, when we, real quick here, I did do the other side already. And here's <clears throat> the lower ball joint. And as you can see, it presses in, but it also is peened over. So it's a little bit of a fight to get out. You definitely need a ball joint press to get that out. Unless you grind all those uh, crimped area is off and you might be able to drive it out with a hammer but a ball joint press something similar to that works really well with that knocked loose we can put our pry bar in here and just gently pry down and finish taking that nut off and that will allow our upper ball joint to completely separate from the spindle. With the axle knot backed off we slide the axle out now we have uh, this whole spindle kind of leaning back just make sure your lines are good you get some play. Next is we'll go ahead and remove this bottom ball joint, get it broke loose, and then we can take this whole spindle and kind of set it up out of the way. Now it's helpful to have either a pole jack, which I have, and a bungee strap and or both because it is a pretty heavy piece. Um, and we need to get it out of the way so we can press that ball joint out. So the, like I was saying, the biggest deal is getting this ball joint out. And <clears throat> sometimes you can just fight yourself and two seconds worth of work makes it so much easier. I fought the other side without taking this tie rod end off. This side, I just, um, it's gonna be way easier. Just go ahead and remove this tie rod, uh, back the nut off, smack it with a hammer, it'll pop right out. Um, you don't have to mess with the adjustment. Get it out of the way. With the pole jack, we can just push this over completely out of the way. Get our ball joint press in here and press that out. I did take my uh, chisel, my air chisel, and work those crimps over a little bit. So it should come out a lot easier now. But you can see how loose this ball joint is too. And with that pressed out, we'll clean that all up and get ready for our new move ball joint here. And it just presses in in reverse procedure going from the bottom and we'll make sure to press on that ring there and make sure we have an empty space at the top for that to go into. Let me get chucked up and I'll show you what that looks like. That's what that looks like. So we're pushing um, on this collar here. We're now pushing on the ball joint itself, the stud, and then this cup has a hollow spot in it to allow the top of that ball joint to come up through that A-arm. So we'll go ahead and tighten that up, press that ball joint in, 
and then there is a retainer clip at the top. Ball joint in and you can see the groove there. We, here's that retainer clip. We'll drop that on, use our snap ring pliers and snap it right in. Retaining clip back on, snapped in place. We'll leave our uh, grease fitting out for right now. We'll leave the plug in because it's really tight between that axle and the top of that ball joint. And it's easy to uh, screw in later. So now we're ready to go back in. First thing we're going to do is reattach that bottom ball joint on that knuckle. The ball joint started back in. We can also pop our axle back through. And sometimes it's easier to kind of do that all in one motion. Like I said, it's very tight between the ball joint, the top of the ball joint, or the bottom of the ball joint, whatever way you're looking at it, and that axle and the, the uh, starting the spindle here. So we have that together. This is still loose. We still have to tighten that up. The axle's in there. We can go ahead and spin the axle nut and washer back on. We'll torque that later. And we will reinstall our, install our tie rod here. And then we just have to change that top A-arm. Now onto this upper A-arm. So there's a, a bolt here and a bolt here. We'll go ahead and loosen them up. They do have these cam locks or uh, cam adjusting washers. They have a flat and then they have a pin. Um, we'll put it back the factory specs. This should have a front end alignment when we're done here. And uh, we'll just put it back to where it was when we put the new A-arm in. But for right now, we're just gonna pop those cam locks off or cam washers and we'll push the bolt through. Uh, another one on this side, and it floats on that bolt. The, wor the worst part about this is actually prying that spring around a little bit just to get that bolt through in the front and back, but they do come out. Uh, you might have to use a pry bar to move that up and down a little bit. Once we get that out, we'll remove the upper A arm and be ready for our new one. We got that back in and the, the upper ball joint tightened up. And don't forget these new ball joints. Let me get you around here so you can see. Do have cotter pins in them. Uh, the old original ones were nylock nuts, but these do have cotter pins. And they also have grease fittings. So we installed them. One up top and then the one at the bottom is a 90. So hopefully you can see that. And we went ahead, reattached this <clears throat> bracket to hold all this stuff. So don't forget to grease that. Uh, we also got our top bolts tightened up. Um, these Teflon pieces have a notch on them, so we just pull them back to factory spec. With, there's a little stud sticking out. You, it's easy to see how they go back. Um, like I said, this thing needs to get an alignment after this, but we're all back together. The only thing left to do is do that end link, but that is something totally separate. And... Um, uh, we do still have to torque the wheel bearings, so I'll show you that in a second. And with our brake held, gets torqued to 177 foot to pounds. And there you go, we're good to go. We'll torque the other side. Uh, other than that, <clears throat> we got it all greased up, stuffed the tires back on, and thanks for stopping by. Have a good day.